All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am PBJ, and we're here with Stango this time, and he is going to show us some Simon Belmont. Alrighty, guys, what's going on? He's moving everything out of the way. Moving everything here. Oh yeah, we have a surface with notes. Can you could put me on control, so I can. You on control? Yeah, I'm on. All right. Eight stops. Here's control. the power, man. You're gonna show us some tips and tricks of how to how to play the Belmonts. All right, so. First things first, the main thing that I want to kind of get across here is generally like the archetype that you're kind of going to be working with with the Belmonts. Um, the way these characters generally work, just your general strategies and what their strengths and weaknesses are. So the main thing with the Belmonts first and foremost is that they are 100% a zoning character. Um, Belmonts actually do have very good normals up close. But where they're at their strongest is where they're applying pressure from ranges that really can't be challenged by other characters. So, primarily with the Belmonts, you know, to just kind of touch on them slightly, you know, down tilt's a really good up close move. Up B is really quick as well. You know, they have a solid grab game where the throw sent far, and they have like some some combos sort of here and there, like they have like down throw stuff, up throw stuff for sharking. But the main range that the Belmonts really succeed in is this mid-range fight right here. Because a lot of characters can't deal with a character that can attack them from that far away. Yeah. Belmonts have like a three to four character range where they can just attack can you completely hit this button, yeah. yeah, as far as this, my S map could hit that. Yeah. yeah, so like from, I guess in this sense right here, each quadrant that you're seeing here, like five to zero is like each character I would presume yeah, as far a, as length. Yeah. Or you could just say this as units. Like the Belmonts can reach like about five to four characters far away from them with like their aerials and their smash attacks and their tilts are about, you know, two or three characters in front of them. So this is the range that optimally the Belmonts are more powerful in. Now the reason why I say the Belmonts is because particularly only with my research I haven't really found any differences between Simon and Richter, and I believe from when they were first released, they were also mentioning that they are pretty much identical. Their strengths are about the same. So that's really the most important thing is, is that a lot of the information I'm about to show you for the Belmonts is really going to be centralized around the core strategy of pressuring your opponent from a range that you can't really, you know, be counterattacked and also, you know, utilizing your strengths at the best while also combating some of your weaknesses. So, while we have the general idea of how these characters work, let's kind of go over their frame data, what their moves do percentage-wise and things like that. So, we're going to go from jabs to specials, uh, to tilts, smash attacks, uh, aerials, throws, and then frame data on like rolls and ledge stuff. So first and foremost, jab one. Uh, hits on frames five to six, I believe. Uh, typically, most jabs are only active for like two or two-ish frames. It only does like two percent. Uh, the Belmonts are definitely not a character where you like try to do jab after stuff because their first actual frame on jab is like frame thirty, so it's terribly slow. There's like no eyes of frames on it. It's a super slow jab. I wouldn't recommend it like trying to do a jab into up B or something because it's not true by any means whatsoever. Uh, jab two is kind of the same story. Uh, after the you know the window for jab one is over, it hits on frame three, so it's sooner than jab uh, one, which makes sense, so it links better. Uh, same difference. Uh, jab two is inherently faster by any means, where you can do like some kind of like pseudo combo out of it. You can't like spam up B after the jab two because you know it does have a good amount of stun, but uh, it's it's not going to lead into a combo of any sort. Yeah. And then you have your normal roll. Uh, rapid jab here uh, starts on frame four after the jab two you just kind of spam it um, Belmont's actually one of the few characters um, even though there's a good amount of them uh, that don't have a third jab they only have two jabs and then they go into the rapid jab a lot of characters in Smash 4 and Ultimate especially uh, have like a third jab like a gentleman like Captain Falcon, Little Mac, uh, Robin all those kind of characters uh, rapid Jab, not really much to comment on it. Rapid Jabs kind of accumulate a small amount of damage. Uh, but you know, it's pretty solid. I've actually, from my experience, uh, and just general with multi-hits, uh, the Belmonts have a pretty solid Rapid Jab. Uh, if you're in a situation where you have to throw out Jab, or like, you're just kind of throwing it out there to cover your landing, you know, it's, it's a solid thing to knock people away. 
does not solid damage, and it's pretty consistent. With you. you're, you're not going to really have people falling out of it and punishing you. Um, so after jabs, uh, typically a move that I try to not really use very often. The jabs don't really get a lot of reward, nor do they lead to better punches. Uh, now tilts. Uh, first tilt we're going to talk about is, in my opinion, uh, probably uh, the Belmont's second best tilt, F tilt. Uh, from the information that I pulled up here, and I kind of did my own frame data like uh, analysis here, but a lot of this stuff, especially since there's no hitbox display in training mode, and the Belmonts actually have really weird hitboxes where it's really hard to tell active frames and things like that. So this is a rough estimate. I probably fully expect in the future to be off by like two or three frames for a lot of this stuff, but this is, just gives you a fair idea. Uh, first hit. Uh, frame on F tilt is frame 12. It's active to about frame 16, so you know, about four frames of activeness. Um, main thing that you're looking at is that the first actionable frame is also frame 30, but it does have an eyes of frame of around the window of 20 to 30. Yeah. So you can spam F tilt much faster than you can cancel a move in itself. So F tilt is very spammable. Um, it's very good neutral tool and it's super disjointed. Like you can slowly like kind of like if you put any of your like uh, hit hurt boxes on here, like if you're trying to do like dash attack, like dash attack is this thing. It will clank with it, but the interesting effect here, I'll try to time it. The interesting effect is that if you notice Fox takes a flinching animation when he uh, clanks with my just do it like at the very tip so it's easier. Notice how Fox kind of like guard breaks. And I can just immediately do it. So I can punish that guard break with just another F tilt. So like if he uh, punches with my F tilt, I can just hit him again. So it's very spammable, especially with the new mechanic in uh, Smash Ultimate with the uh, dash canceling and any move. You know, you can do your dash dance in neutral right here. And then once you reach the, uh, you know, the part where you can start running, you can literally just like let go of the stick and just like F tilt in neutral like this, like doing pivots, doing your approaching. Very, very solid tool, especially after aerials. You can kind of do this and dash back. Uh, so, sort of similar to like what Marth does in Melee, where like he does like short hop fair and then dashes back and does something else. Um, yeah. F tilt, amazingly good move. Uh, one of the Belmont's better moves. It kills pretty solidly at the tip. That's 14 damage. Uh, tremendously strong uh, tilt. One of the better moves uh, in the game, honestly, from what I've seen. Uh, up tilt. The data I've kind of pulled on it is that, you know, it hits on frame seven. So it's a pretty fast up tilt. It's active, I believe, longer than what I've had written down. But what I have written down is uh, till frame 17. So 10 frames of activeness is not bad. I believe it may be somewhat inaccurate uh, just because the hitbox is, it's not very clear like when it starts nor when it ends. Uh, but as far as this move, if you are beneath someone and you throw this move out and you time it, there is no way they're beating this. Especially with the new mechanic of the dash cancel where you just let go of stick, you can just do down tilt out of your dash. So like if I up throw him here and he like double jumps away, I do like up air and I can cover his landing like that. So very strong move, up air, dash cancel. Yeah, yeah, up air, dash cancel. Up air, yeah, that's okay. So like drift back into me like you want to punch me. Oh, like down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. so like yeah, okay, so like okay, after yeah. I do the up air, like drift into me like I'm gonna jam. Yeah. You can just kind of spam it out like this. Like as far as any move I've seen, yeah. nothing's been able to beat this move yet. Yeah. So pretty much currently the best sharking up tilt in the game right now from what I've seen. Uh, I think even Cloud's down here, though it's a very much nerfed version of it, would definitely not be able to beat this move, 100%. Uh, down tilt. Down tilt has two parts to it. It has a first slide and like a jump kick. Uh, best tilt, by far. There's nothing that's better than this move in terms of his like normals. Um, first hit does 6%. Second hit does... 8. 8%. So... 8.4 actually. 8.4. If that matters to you. Yeah, if, if it matters to you. You know, it adds up, but we're just going to round up here. So, uh, with down tilt, 
I believe from what I've kind of labbed out, and I can actually probably test it on him right here, as far as when the move actually hits it itself. Oh yeah, this glitch is kind of, I don't know why exactly it does this, but we, we can try to jam this here. But, no, I don't want to grab. I want to do that. Yeah, this isn't going to work out. So, from what I've seen for down tilt, I have written down hits, uh, the first available frame, I'm going to say hits on either frame four, five, or six. Yeah. The information that I importantly have down, because typically this first hit is not actually very good. It's super slow. This is like the first frame that you can shield. Uh, I believe like it's active until like, you know, frame 30 or frame 25. So this first hit is super punishable. Like this box could probably up smash me after I down tilt them. Like, it's super, super laggy. Oh, let's see. Do it again. Yeah, so, like, if I hold shield right here. Zero. Yeah, like, I could definitely get punished, like, on right, that zero. Hold down. Yeah. yeah, like, if you DI it get down. Around? Yeah, if I DI it down. Like, yeah, if you DI it down, it's like a pseudo crouch cancel. Yeah, I think there's, like, slightly, compared to Smash 4 to this, I think there's more crouch cancel in this game. Mm. Like, I have to get somebody else to confirm it, but I'm about 90% sure. I thought there's way more, like, a little bit, like, 10% of crouch cancel. Not melee, that's crazy. That melee crouch cancel is done, but this is, uh... Yeah, so primarily with that down tilt, that's the move that I don't really pay attention to for the first hit. The second hit is really where you start getting the mix-ups and openings for it. The thing that I labbed out is that with down tilt 1, the first slide, the first actionable frame that you get the move out and you can also connect it to uh, the second down tilt because the interesting thing about this move is you can immediately down tilt without doing the first hit. So you can immediately do the down tilt without the first hit coming oh, out. Oh, that's kind of cool. What do you yeah. press AA? You just, you just spam it. You just spam the, 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 oh, the move and it immediately cool. does the jump. Does it hit me from, go, can it hit me from like right here? Oh yeah, no, this thing oh, hits yeah. for very far away. Uh, oh, that's pretty cool. Typically, like right before he uh, like well, gets his actual here, feet on the ground. All right, that's actually really good. Like if uh, stand right there, that's yeah. probably it. Yeah. yeah, that hits. That's a little yeah. bit weaker, but yeah, like but that's still good. from like about five yeah. characters it's away, kind of it will knock down. Range, yeah. yeah. So the main thing yeah. about this move is that you know the first frame that you can hit the first link into the second one is frame six. Okay. So you can get frame six on down tilt one, and then the first. Uh, frame that down tilt 2 actually hits is till frame 13 and when it ends because there's no hitbox display and the move doesn't really have any indication of when it really ends yeah. I wrote frame 30 I really don't believe that frame 30 is anywhere close to it and I would probably say more more than likely like 20 or 25 uh, regardless though tremendously strong move yeah um, primarily after the tilts, like I said, this move has a ton of application. First things first, it combos into itself. Yeah. This move can actually kill at the ledge. Right. So like, for example, if I set your percentage to like... It's all kind of the background, don't worry yeah. about it guys. Everybody's playing Smash. Alrighty, so I'll set you to like 110%. Okay. And we're, let's find out where this blast zone is real quick. So it's about right here. So let's say, just for example, we're on a small stage and you're right there. That's where the ledge is. If I hit you with this down tilt, which this move, by the way, the first slide yeah. does not go past ledges, but the second slide can jump over oh, any ledge. Oh, okay, that's good actually. So, so even on a, that means it jumps on a platform. If, if so I, right? if yeah, so I can actually travel platforms with this. Yeah. So if I hit you with this, this can kill you. Oh, let's go so like if you're in the yeah yeah. So if I. Is there is there a blast yeah, go, go do, just do the Oh yeah, slide. so this is so what it would slide. look like. So here, come up here and I can show like the killing power behind it. So if I have you right here, I hit you with this, and that can kill. Yeah. So like if you're you know at high percent, like I would probably say like around like 150, and I hit with this down tilt, I can be like, okay, I hit you, and I can convert it so into that. So that first down tilt won't go off the stage. Or off the yeah, platform. this won't go off the platform. This will stay okay, on. That's cool. So I can down tilt even on the corner right here. But for example, if like if you're like trying to play neutral like in the yeah. corner right here and I'm like okay I'm gonna down tilt and I notice like I hit the first hit of down tilt I can yeah. just go like and that will kill on some stages at certain percents. 
So very, very strong option that uh, Belmont's have. Um, now primarily from there, down tilt is also a great mix up option on shield. Yeah. So one of the big nerfs in general smash command, uh, general smash mechanics and uh, ultimate, is you can't cross people up yeah. through just typical running. So like if you're holding your shield and I'm gonna come behind you and like pivot grab you, it's not possible. I'll just keep running through you. Uh, there is a technique that you know we've kind of discovered uh, through you know us playing. It's called the phase dashing. Phase dashing, whatever you kind of exactly call it. So if you shield right here, I can kind of drift drift through your shield like this, yeah. and kind of cross you up, yeah. like so. Yeah. So I have special uh, ability that the Belmonts have, and most people have for some of their like you know dash kind of moves. Is, you know, one, you can dash attack through the shield, so if you kind of throw up your shield right here, I can go through it if I time it right. Yeah. So if you throw up your shield, I can dash attack through Ooh, your shield. Wait, that was and that hits the entire time because the dash attack's oh like a God. circle around it. So it's pretty safe against That's actually a good cross up there because you can't run through more. Yeah, things. yeah. So, like, right there, that's pretty safe for a lot of people. The shield, like, if just like uh, let go of shield after I hit it, and it will, you'll drop shield as soon as possible. But that shield poke too, so let me yeah. reset you. So just like a uh, drop shield. Yeah. So like you get out of it pretty quickly, but like not a lot of characters can get that punish. Yeah. Or at least do it effectively. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, besides a dash attack, which most people have, Belmont has something in particular special to him. So if you shield right here, if I notice I hit your shield, yeah. I can immediately yeah. Yeah. go into a situation uh -oh. Going. Sorry. I can immediately go into a situation where if I confirm that I hit your shield uh, with the down tilt. Say, say it again, I'm sorry. It's very distracting when people talk. So what I can do is that if you shield my first down tilt, which yeah. you do, I can react to that and cross up with the second one. And as far as I've gone through this game, I have not found a character that can punish this. Especially when it's in a scenario where I'm near a ledge, it's for example. Safe. Yeah, that's like. Like, let me reset it over if you're like stand like right exactly like right here on this line. Okay, this way, right? Yeah, right on that line. So if I go like, sorry, go back right there. Let me just reset it. Like uh, here I'll show you where exactly. Like right, right, right around here. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, I can't you can't punish that. Let me let me do it again. Go go do it again. Yeah. So I'm trying to do actually like. Yeah. You can't. Punish I tried to back air immediately. It's yeah. literally one of the best shield like pressure options in the game, as far as just normals go. Just because the down tilt has so much range, yeah. it literally goes like across half the stage for a lot of, uh, you know, a yeah, lot it's of. It's like stages. most of them need too, actually. Yeah. Or, or Omega, all the Omega. So the same side. down tilt has uh, stage control because you know you can dash out, you can do it out of the dash where like you and I can be playing neutral right here, and then all of a sudden. Oh, I messed up here. I usually do like down, down on the on the control stick to do it. So I go like I go like this for it. Where I kind of just do like down tilt out of neutral right here. So I'm dashing, and I just like down tilt out of nowhere. So like the thing is about this, this this isn't a situation where you could be like, oh well, if I just like throw out a move, I can beat it. Most grounded moves will clank with this move, or I'll just go straight right through. So just spam your up tilt and out down tilt into it. Because I be probably bet that I could beat it. So here, do, just do, keep doing the up tilt until like I either clank or something happens. So I'll just keep trying to do it. So, off that clank, if I just spam it again. I'm trying to, on clank, yeah, right? yeah, I'm trying to time One, it. One, two, three. One, two, three. Here, you should just react to my slide. That would probably be easier. So you just react to my slide and up tilt. You don't have to reset it. So, so what do I just try to hit your slide? Yeah, just try to hit my slide with the up tilt. Okay, cool. Not reverse though. You're not. You're oh. definitely not gonna beat it that way. It turns it around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look. So I have to be. Uh, let me see what happens on face throwing. Do it. Okay, I get what I'm saying. Okay, okay yeah. Do it this way. Mm -hmm. And I spam up. Oh, it doesn't turn. Wait, what the heck? Do you? It only turns you around when you're on the ground. Right. So just just react to my slide. So okay, I'll just yeah. say three, two, one, go. Three, 
Three, two, one, go. Don't reset it, just turn around. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. It's hard to do, but just start it out for him. Three, two, one, go. This actually shows how good this slide is. It's yeah, it's my, hard to In my to opinion, it's hard to write. The fact that I can't. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, that's actually the stuff that's been crazy. So, three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. It's, I would like scoop that foot, man. <laughs> so here's the, here's the, here, actually, you probably would be able to do it easier with S smash because it's a lot more after. Okay. So, three, two, one, go. I just straight up beat the move. Yeah, this is so be most moves. So. The main thing with this guy is that if I clank, I can just do it, start it up again because most people in this game don't have like a really reliable like oh frame four move that is like good in tight situations yeah. that converts. So if you're running into a situation where you know you're dash dancing here. Honestly, from what I've seen, I haven't been punished for it too hard, where I can just down tilt in neutral. Yeah. Where, like, if I'm going like this, I'm going to be like, okay, so I'm going to down tilt neutral here, and if I hit a shield, I'm going to cross it up anyway. If I clank, I'm just going to do it again, and other than that, I'll just straight up beat the move. Yeah. And since I low profile a lot of things here, some people can't grab me, and my foot, it usually goes up under a lot of people's grab boxes. So down tilt, um... Probably the Belmont's best grounded move. Yeah. Um, anything else, F tilt, like F tilt's great and all, but this, there's not, there's, there's nothing that can really rival okay. this move right here. So what are the other moves you want to talk about since we want to run through this? We're gonna do, up, we're gonna do uh, smash attacks. Okay. So first things first, F smash, super disjointed, super powerful, uh, percentage wise for the tip, and you move too close, just stay still, don't move. Sure, I'm getting it. Makes 20, 21%. Just don't move. Nah, he even yeah, 20. That was his idol. I didn't do that. That's like... <laughs> you were just saying, come on. So 21% for the sweet spot, 19 or 16 for the sour. Yeah, so there's three parts of the move middle, hilt, and tip. Yeah. So in a range of 20 to 16% is what you can get. Uh, stupidly strong. Uh, really deceptive hitbox. It actually hits way below the whip. So there's a lot of characters in this game that have a really bad vertical recovery that doesn't snap the ledge, like Ike, Prom, Kirby. If you pressure them to up B above the ledge, like, you know, anywhere above the ledge, you can literally just stand at a range and just charge this thing and wait for them to up B and just whip. And so like, just hold down instead of uh, snapping. So like do up B and hold down. Yeah, just hold down as I get these. You can literally just whip recoveries like that. So yeah, if you do something completely vertical like that, like run off and up B, like that would probably be. I could just whip that recovery, and it's stupid, stupid strong. Very strong smash attack. You get main aid. You get main aid. All right, uh, up smash. Very quick. Does it, scoop from the, you, does it scoop from the ground? Like, I'll flush that out. No, no. It, uh, it, it has a very, very thin hitbox. Um, very strong. Uh, F smash hits on, like, frame 24, lasts till 31. Uh, that's super asterisk to it because it's really hard to tell how long the move lasts. Up smash appears to be quicker, uh, about frame 18 to 24. Um, same deal with this guy. Stupidly strong. He's at 90%. He went above Battlefield and FD Blast Zone. I'm trying to parry it. <laughs> um, so, up smash. Really thin hitbox. Not very applicable in a lot of scenarios. It's, it's, I would definitely say it's like a super hard read move, but there are certain scenarios that you can use it. For example, in Holy Water, with like floatier characters, you can kind of do the sour spot of it, which can still kill. So like, you know, let's get him up a few percentage here. You know, we'll kind of hit him with the cross a little bit. Uh, you know, we'll go an up throw. And then, you know, we'll hit him with the holy water and run up up smash, see how far he goes. Okay. So holy water, run up up smash. That still kills. So around 120, like, 
if you can't reliably get the whip after the holy water, you can just run them up smash. Because it's a little bit quicker and makes it a little more consistent depending on, you know, if it's a floaty character. Alright. Down smash. Very good range. Wait, what was that? That was down smash. So very good range in front of him and behind him. Uh, yeah, so we go right here. This should be. Yeah, don't oh, move. It's, yeah, oh, don't, I don't move. I, okay. I will do all See, the I didn't know. Yeah. So this will hit like yeah. right around here. Right. Yeah, don't don't move. I got it. So this should do it right here. Yeah. Okay, that's deceptive. Yeah, so about two character lengths in front of him and behind him will hit for down smash. Uh, it definitely looks like the back hit is a little bit smaller than the front hit. Because, like, if I if I can't hit him here with the back hit, I can probably hit him right here. Front hit's a little more in front of him. The back is a little smaller. Uh, as far as this move, this is definitely my least my least used move with the Belmonts. Uh, the down air? Uh, down, uh, down smash. Okay. But from... Knockback. It's a green, not the blast zone. Yeah, that that would that would be a blast zone for a certain stage. As far as knockback, yeah, it's pretty solid. Especially on knockback. And My as far song. as the down smash, it hits the earliest out of all the smash attacks. It frame 14 from what I've seen, 14 to 17 for active frames. Uh, second hit is about frame 19 to 23. Another big asterisk on that because it's really hard to tell when these moves actually end. We won't entirely know the full accuracy until the game is data mined. Yeah. But down smash, uh, main thing I can say about this is that there's certain setups with it that you can potentially combo off of it, and it's a very quick move. So if you need to get off me, that is you know immediately powerful and covers more space in front and back. Yeah. Down smash is a really good option you can do so. Okay. Uh, what now, are the other moves after? Uh, we're doing specials. Okay, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna actually swap out that one. Out. I can. I won't. Oh, I won't really need anything. I can. Okay, I can cool. You got it. All right, I got it. So, Sorry. as far as specials, uh, like I said, the Belmonts are super zoning uh, archetypes. They use projectiles. They use uh, stupid long range, um, and that's where they get the uh, you know most pressure and mileage out of their kit. Um, We'll start with the uh, cross. Uh, the main thing with the Belmont specials is that they have a lot of variations to them. Um, there's only two variations to the actual cross itself. You have the normal throw, which uh, goes a, a good distance. I would say you know about five units. It looks like based on the uh, you know actual measuring on the training stage. So about five units, and then it comes back. Uh, interesting thing about the cross is that this thing like travels full screen. Like this thing will actually it looks like how far how far back does it go? So if I do from zero, and throw it. Oh, I don't want to do the long one. I want to do just the normal throw. So normal throw. Go right here. Wow. So it goes about ten units behind him. So it goes about five units in front. And about 10 units behind him. For the hard toss, goes about 10 units in front, 10 units behind him. So it looks like it always goes about 10 characters behind him, but you can choose the five and five characters in front of you or 10. So that's the length of the projectile that you're looking at. So interesting thing with the cross is that there's a lot of mix-ups you can do with it, for example. If you're in a scenario where you're playing against a character and they jumped over your cross, you can actually kind of play the game waiting for the cross to come back and use it to manipulate what your opponent is going to do. Especially if you hit them with it and it's coming back, you can actually combo off of the returning hit. Um, the cross does about 9 damage each way. Uh, second hit appears to not really do anything really more special than the uh, first hit. They have about the same knockback. Very good projectile. Uh, very clankable though. A lot of projectiles will send this thing back. Shields will send this thing back. So it's not the most, you know, you know, the most powerful projectile in the game. But it has a lot of uh, unique properties to it that make it really strong in a lot of scenarios. And then we're gonna talk about uh, So we're going to talk about neutral B here. This is the axe throw. 
Um, main thing with the Axler here is that this one has also variations. Uh, three of them, I believe. So we roll to the ledge here, and we'll just move the rock right here so it doesn't have hands. So we'll roll all the way to the ledge so we kind of know what sizing we're dealing with here. So we have the normal toss, which goes this distance right here. This is the normal axe toss that you get here. We have the shallow toss, where you kind of arc the toss here. So for comparison, this is normal, this is shallow, and then you have a far. So you can see there's three different angles you can cover with this axe. This primarily is gonna be one of your uh, more utilized edge guarding tools when you're forcing uh, characters to recover in a certain pattern so you can hit them with the whip. That's uh, one of the main setups that I've been finding recently. Um, Axe has a really interesting property where, you know, once you kind of throw it out there, it just kind of goes, and you can combo off of it a lot of the time. So, for example, if I'm having Fox right here and he gets hit with this Axe, I can, you know, full hop forward air and after the Axe. So this would be a true combo. Um, the Axe is very good for applying pressure off stage in neutral when they're, you know, avoiding the cross because... A lot of times to avoid the cross, some characters' best options are to jump. What Axe does, it covers all aerial options. Um, this projectile can be reflected. It can be beaten with certain hitboxes. But it's almost not really worth it to do any kind of challenging of it. Because for the most part, this projectile does 18%. Uh, as far as the different variations of it, it all does the same damage. So... There's definitely a risk reward to this thing when you try to challenge it because you're either eating 18% and a follow up, or you, you know, beat the projectile and you know the Belmont has already ran away from your approach to begin with. So typically, on average, with no staling, you're getting about you're eating about 30ish percent if you get hit with the axe and the whip, like forward air, for example. So 30% with a high risk of losing the interaction is very strong. So the Belmonts have a great zoning game, especially when you uh, utilize the Ox correctly. Uh, then we're gonna talk about the other projectile in his arsenal, uh, the Holy Water, the Down B. Um, not a very quick projectile. Uh, it does have like a uh, bounce hitbox. So, you know, you can, the first actual frame that the hitbox actually comes out is frame 18, and then once it comes in contact with any surface, it will explode. So this can bounce, uh, come in contact with walls, if I go over here, platforms, and then just the normal ground. So the Holy Water um, is an SDI-able projectile, but for the most part, there are some characters who can't get out of it because they're too large. Or if you're smack dab in the middle of the actual fire, there's no way to escape. You're pretty much guaranteed to get a follow-up uh, follow up off of the Holy Water. Now there's a few Holy Water follow-ups that you can kind of do basically. So to gain the most damage typically, Holy Water to Nair is a solid follow-up. On average it's going to be about like 27%, 25%. Yeah, if you milk the most damage out of it, you can get about 27% without staling. Um, generally, other follow-ups you can do, for example, is down here. Um, when they're at a closer distance, they're going to get spiked into the ground, but if you do the down air later, they get popped up. So you can kind of do follow-ups like so. So Holy Water is essentially one of your setup moves. You can do smash attacks out of it, you can do aerials, uh, you can even grab. However, I have found that grab is inconsistent because the way that the natural arc of the flame takes you, it sends you up. And a lot of times because of the way the uh, Belmont's grab works is that the uh, grab is gonna generally whip a lot of the times. Um, so a lot, of, a, a lot of times it's not really worth it to uh, to try to do a grab because you know you can't get the throw but there's a lot of other things that you can do that honestly is just typically better. Um, one thing that I have seen people do is you know you kind of do like uh, cross setups where you know you throw the holy water, pull hop cross, holy water, pull hop 
across, down air, and it really depends on the damage, but I kind of like rack them up here. You do like 26% maybe. Across, down air. Cross, down there, and then if he bumps into the cross, then you know you get a little bit of an extra foul up there. But typically, it's just going to lead into you know forward air, up B, whatever it is, uh, depending on the DI angle and trajectory of is. So you can take this from here, pop him up in fire, move down air, combo up B. It's typically one of uh, more Belmont's more common kill setups. But generally, if they're at kill percent, like over at 100, it's usually just better to do an X-Match because it will pretty much kill on most stages at the center, around like 120-ish, 130, especially if it's the tip of the X-Match, that will definitely kill on like pretty much every stage from what I've noticed. Uh, last but not least, up B. Up B is very good. Um, very good at get off the option. Uh, does pretty solid damage, I believe, what is this? Yep, 16. I actually didn't know that, I just guessed that. That's fine. So about 16, 17-ish damage, because it's like 0.8. Uh, interesting notes about up B, it's invincible on frame 5 and 6, and it actually hits on frame 6. So the frame you are invincible, you actually do get a hitbox out on the same, uh, the same frame. So if I kind of show it off right here, then it's going to be a little hard to show, especially with the uh, glitch that I'm having right now. But let's see if I can kind of show it off right here. If I actually slow it down, you can actually probably see it pretty well. So if you take a look, kind of freeze frame on that uh, frame I was invincible, right? So we kind of bring him back up here. And it's going to freeze frame on the frame I'm invincible here. So I'm invincible during that first hit of uh, the up B that actually comes out. Because frame 6 is the first uh, frame that it hits, and I'm invincible during it. So very good out of shield option because pretty much... If I connect with you, I'm not going to trade with your move, uh, unless you put me previously before that. But, you know, if you lost frame 5 of the out of shield, that's not a bad, uh, that's not a bad up especially since this thing, uh, does a lot of hits, the hits below, uh, above him. On a good portion of the stages as well, you can actually automatically land on top of the platform. So, for example, if I'm shielding right here, and I have B, uh, like Battlefield, Dreamland, uh, this is very safe to do. So I can literally just up B and then just shield as soon as I land in case I miss or, you know, I can go below and drop down. Alright, so now, uh, aerials, fair, starts on frame 14 for the hits, active till about frame 16, auto cancelable, can fastball, unique, uh, properties to the Belmont aerials for forward air and back air. Uh, they are angleable, so you can angle them down and up like a smash attack. So, does a lot of damage, has tremendous range, typically when you're playing in neutral with these characters because you can't get their forward air really low consistently. It's usually a better idea to do a high arc uh, down angle, so you can kind of retreat back and do something like this. So I can jump back and like, do down angle forward air like so. So it's really hard to approach on something like that, especially if they shield. So like if you rain up shield real quick, or just walk to make it a little easier. So like you walk up shield, like this uh, forward air, I can just immediately act tail afterwards if you want to like try to come out of shield and like punish it. Yeah, like you try to act tail out of shield. I could just F tilt immediately afterwards. So the forward air, very safe on shield, especially at the tip and, you know, space backwards. Even if you parry it, it's yeah. still a little safe. Because of the, just the, the distance of the... Of yeah, the yeah, yeah, the distance, yeah. Yeah, the distance is uh, pretty much giving me a buffer of spacing. Okay. So on aerial for now. Yeah. So uh, up air, hits on frame 14. Looks like it's active till frame 20. Uh, it hits very high above the Belmonts. Um, one interesting thing about up air, uh, kills super early. The tipper is super strong on this move. If you get hit with this, like above 100% at tip, uh, it's pretty much a wrap for a lot of characters. And you showed, um, like up air to up B, you think? 
Upper up B? Yeah, that's not a true combo. No, like, but it's, it's not a true combo. But like, mm -hmm. to me, sometimes. Like, yeah, so like if you do up, if I'm like, up air. He was like juggling, we were playing earlier, and he was like juggling me with up air, up air, and he like up B. I think I like tried to do something and or panic. And he just like killed me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I just like died. So like you, you like, uh, you like jumped out yeah. of it? Yeah, I was getting, I was and getting, I, like, and I did something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I was getting complaining. scared from his up air juggles, so I was like, oh, get me out of here. And then like he just like up beat me. I was like, wait a minute. It's like uh, if you, if you, get, you guys play cloud and smash cool, so. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of similar where like if you avoid clouds like uh, up air, like he just dash attacks your landing or yeah, like yeah. nares. Yeah, it's, it's trust of... me, it's annoying. You'll, you'll see when <laughs> you play. But if you're a Belmont, it's not annoying if you get to play this character. So, <laughs> but you play the cats there. So. Uh, down air. So down air has a property where it stalls you in the air for a few moments uh, till about frame 13. Yeah. Frame 13 is uh, when it's first active. Uh, the down air has two different properties. The first immediate hit on frame 13 has a spiking property. So if they're off stage, if you just like kind of jump off real quick. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let me just jump. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, right, right, right where you went was easy. Uh, I'll just go straight up this time. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So just... I'll go straight up. Oops, that's snap. I'll go straight up straight up. Oh, oh wow, that thing is a big. <laughs> I can beat that. Is, uh... Just up be like close so I can like. Okay. Yeah. Okay, stop right now. Oh, I think Fox is up B is not super armor right now. I don't remember that. I'll just jump though. Yeah. All right, that jungled you. I want to try to do the spike. Okay, that's good. Drop it. So jump here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that will spike like on the first frames. I don't know exactly when the spike's active because like I said, this move's hard to test in training mode and it's also not very clear like when the spike starts, when it ends, and when it turns into normal move. Yeah. Now, the spike is just pretty much very at the very beginning of the move. Yeah. Uh, later on in the move, it has a pop-up property. That's your main combo tool when you're using the down air. Uh, generally, with this down air, this leads into a lot of things. So this leads into when it's high percent. If we just kind of put me like 15 to all oh, high, like 80. Yeah, 70. like I throw you at like 80 percent right here, and just do like no di because okay. like I have other coverages for other di's, but this is just for the upbeat. You can combo this in the upbeat. Oh, this kills on a you know few, fair amount of stages. So di the upbeat yeah. and just see exactly what happens. Like that. And I was yeah, so Battlefield, he's like right on the cusp of dying, especially yeah. at this percent right here, yeah. he will hunt 100%. Especially if you're like panicking or like some bad one. Yeah, like, bad DI or whatever so it is. That's like very clutch. That was from 83. Yeah, so that's like yeah. 83 this is on, the, on the cusp of dying. And this is Fox, so other lighter characters. At 100%, 100% dying. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I remember this is Fox, he's a fastball, right? And he dies off the top off of this down air combo. Yeah. And if you DI it away, uh, typically forward air, yeah, uh, throwing the cross can yeah. be like something that can cover jump away. Yeah. It's like really good after I play like around this percentage, like 15 to 25. Probably like yeah, because I can combo like. I call this the juicy percent. Like 20 to 50 is like juicy combo mm -hmm. percentage for almost every character. And that's a true combo yeah. right there. Down air to, to uh, forward air is going to be a true combo. I don't like that. <laughs> so, Dare, very good combo starter. It's actually really hard to beat as a move. Like, try to up tilt my down air here. Like, I'll trade with it. Yeah. Like, it, it comes and down. A, and it's a GameStop trade for me. Like, where he's GameStop. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm trading GameStop. on my Switch, and I'm getting $20 for my Switch. <laughs> Store credit. Store credit. <laughs> So it's not like good trade for me, good trade for him. Yeah. Yeah, I would like kind of go right through it. Yeah, yeah. See, that's a GameStop trade. That's a GameStop is, trade. You're a GameStop. You want to be GameStop in every trade. So <laughs> <laughs> they always win. So they always win every time. GameStop wins. You don't. But uh, yeah, so. That right there, super strong. Down air is very hard to beat. Um, even if you shield it, I'll just show what happens when you shield it. Yeah. I bounce super high up in the air. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like another property of his tilting, how to tilt is safe due to down tilt again. Where like, yeah. if I hit something on shield, it just doesn't so, matter. So how he has a lot of safe different situations. So if you shield it right here, one thing I can do is just immediately air dodge away like towards the ledge. Yeah. Or another thing I can do is, yeah. and like, try to forward air like if you try to punish it out of shield 
Or my favorite mix-up that I'm actually liking right now is that I do down air drift away and throw the holy water. Oh, actually, let me do the down air thing. I'm gonna try that. Oh wait, let me set Yeah. So, so even my, even my immediate cover back air, even my buffer back air, I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like I could do this and then wait and then do another down air oh, to like to grab or something. Yeah. Oh, so like I could go like okay, I I hit That's your shield. Right, I hit your shield. I figured out mid tournament. I mean mid game mid uh, video that I want to play that. <laughs> Boy, I didn't really care, but you showed me that down and I was a believer. Yeah, right. Now let's go. So Dare is super good. Uh, what else we got? Throws. Well, that's done. Okay, here we go. So throws. Uh, we have forward, back, up, down. Yeah. Uh, forward throw, kill throw. Okay. Um, has super great knockback. It's eight percent, so it's not a real damaging throw, and it yeah. really doesn't combo. Yeah. It's just good to kind of set up edge guards or kill uh, when you're at the ledge. One twenty. If I throw you at one twenty. We'll kind of just see what knockback we get out of this. So, like, we'll just imagine. Like I don't know. So, the actual blast zone is right here. Right, right. Is, is, is over there. So, if we just say this is the ledge, okay, okay. and I grab you. Okay. So maybe With a little like, more percent right there. Yeah, so, it's probably like a 135. So that's maybe too like hard. 150. I feel like. To just kind of. Yeah. 150 is guaranteed, but 135. Let me see. For me. most characters in the game. That will kill on most stages. Yeah. So 150 just, is guaranteed, probably. Yeah, 150 will probably do it. Just stole me to the freaking heavens, you know what I mean? I'm out of here. Like, I'm yeah, like you. 150 on most stages, that's going to kill. I'm out of here. Uh, especially if you just got to grab it. On certain percents, this 100% will kill. So F throw is like your kill throw. What your up throw? I don't know. Up throw doesn't kill. Back throw also is kind of a kill throw right here. Yeah, let's see. All right. That's Looks the same like kind of knockback. Same, same knockback.com. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go to same knockback.com. That's what you see. Yeah, exactly. So uh, same percentage for F throw and back throw. Yeah. Eight percent. Okay. Kind of have the same trajectory and arc, and they okay. kind of look like the same animation. So like if they're trying to DI it right, it looks a little weird because for F throw he does like this little twirl. Yeah. For back throw he kind of does this sort of same animation. So oh, DIing okay. it well, right is kind of all weird. Right, Saki. <laughs> Konami was like, all right, listen. We need him to have some mix-ups, buddy. <laughs> uh, you throw. Um, up throw doesn't really have any true combos. There's like this weird pseudo combo with uh, up throw where you kind of up throw and up smash buffer. Okay. Where like, they can jump or air dodge out of this. It's kind of tight. Yeah. But the main thing is, is that, let's say you air dodge right here. Just okay. do that out of uh, the up throw. Okay. Without doing out any DI. Okay. I could like probably cover the landing with something yeah. else. Usually, what I like to do in the in this throw, I like to up tilt first to see if they like fall on top of me. So I like kind of yeah. wait, up tilt, up tilt, up air, yeah. and then they'll try to land on me again. Up tilt, up tilt, up tilt, and then they'll like start diing away from me, and I'll be like axe. Yeah, note that a lot of characters in this game are heavy. <laughs> but they'll be falling faster than this box. Yeah, so I can literally just like spam up tilt against their falling out of the up throw. Okay. Um, up throw does the most percentage of all the throws, 12%. So if you're strictly just trying to get damage, like particularly if you're trying to make a comeback or, yeah. you know, uh, exacerbate your lead, up throw is the one you want to do if you ever get a grab, particularly because that just gives you the most damage. Now, down throw. Down throw is a weird throw. There's a lot of testing that I've done with this throw. It looks like a lot of like down and away or just away DI usually gets out of, out of those combos. But I have seen things like, for example, like, um, you know, down throw dash attack. Down throw dash attack oh, appears that to be real. Pretty sick. Yeah, if you buffer it, that's like definitely. Yeah, yeah that's real. Yeah, that that down throw dash attack appears to be real. That's kind of crazy. And then when I can do it. If they like, if I buff a shield maybe, if I land, hold on. What's this? If I if, if you like well, no, don't 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 reset it. Alright, so just do the death dash attack. Say if I like yeah, do hold on, do it again. I was gonna say if I Oh uh, you mean like after I dash attack you? Yeah. And then you can do the down flight, you know what I mean? Yeah, Maybe I, I mix see. it up. It's like a mix up. Yeah, it's kinda like a mix yeah, up. I like could true, either. But yeah. Honestly with the safer thing that I would probably say to do is down throw dash attack. Down throw dash attack. Dash once out of the out of the down throw oh, and then yeah. F tilt. Get these. <laughs> his forwards, I, I feel like his forward tilt and his forward smash look the exact same. <laughs> no, that's forward tilt? Yeah, that's not forward smash. 
All right, man, listen. <laughs> that is almost the same, especially with a lot of stuff going on in all those stages. <laughs> I don't know the difference. I mean, he's telling us the difference, but when you play him, it looks the same. Yeah, but you, you won't know. It's like playing Sonic. He has, like, four moves that look the same. All right, so what else we got? So down throw is covered. Down throw is a combo throw, so D-I-N on this. Okay. You can, like, do Nair. You can do uh, forward air, like, at higher percents. You typically have to angle to, like, get true combos for, like, the down throw. Like, if the DI is up right here at a later percent. Oh, yeah, it's very angle. Like, kind of, like, uh, down throw you a few times right, at yeah, percent. If the DI is, like, up or in, I can do that. I'm give you, like, 20 percent. I should do it. I can do the forward air there. And then if he actually... Eyes up, I can still probably do the forward air there, actually. Ooh. And then if he DI's in, I can do very close. Uh, one mix up that you could probably do there when it's out of the percent is just throw the cross to cover jumps. Yeah. And if he doesn't jump, then you could just uh, act up the landing okay. <laughs> and just space with this. Or if he comes in there, you can down tilt. If I hit the shield, I just go fast. If I hit him, I just do it. So crazy amount of mix up with this character when you have uh, such a powerful uh, down throw. Okay. And then just simple stuff right here. Not exactly going to go over every single thing yeah. that okay. these uh, rolls are going to do, but forward roll uh, starts on frame 1, ends on th frame 31. It has invincibility between frame 14 and 15. So actually a pretty solid roll for the most part for uh, a forward roll. Yeah. Forward rolls are usually the worst and it's at least for my testing, because I don't know if this is 100% accurate, it appears that the back roll is actually worse on the bell line. It's usually okay. the other way around. Okay, let's see it. So, uh, back roll, frame 1 to 36. Okay. Invincibility frames frame 15 to 16. Okay. So, essentially, Something the invincibility is just invincibility. One, frame one frame extra. Yeah. On the, so, the back roll actually gets invincibility later um, than the forward roll. So, Statistically, back roll is worse, mm -hmm. and it's a little weird scenario, so I almost think that my data is wrong, because usually it's the other way around. Forward roll is usually the worst one, back roll is usually the better one. Yeah. Spot dodge, good. Let's see. Good spot dodge. Uh, frame 1 to 29 for the whole move. Let's see. Frame 3 to 17 for the invincibility. So, as far as I can kind of slow it down for you. Down so I can just down for it. So, I'll slow it down right here, so... Okay. Ooh, that's cool. It looks like the Matrix now. <laughs> the Matrix. Ooh. <laughs> that's actually fun now. Fun now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I like to do it on Uh, Air dodge. I haven't really done the air dodge data, but for the most part, Belmont has a pretty standard air dodge. He doesn't really have, like, really quick invincibility out of it. I think it's, like, frame three or four. And then as far as the cooldown for it, um, it doesn't look out of the average or anything. Directional air dodge is uh, worse, just like everyone else's. Um, the standard air dodge has more invincibility frames and it's not as laggy. Yeah. When you do directional, uh, you like fall to the heavens. And you went over reco his recovery? Or? Not exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. So, recovery. Belmont is very difficult. That's just really the fact about it. Yeah. The main thing that you have to utilize in this game is, for example, there's a lot of times when you'll be attacked and you'll go into the corners of the stage. Yeah. A lot of the times, believe it or not, you want to use that directional air dodge to get a little bit of a boost in your recovery, especially when you're in a position that you can't be attacked while you're recovering. So, like, let's say this is me up here, like, recovering from the stage, and I do, you know, like, directional air dodge towards the stage, so I get a little more distance. So, for example, I can actually put up my percentage. So I want you to, like, F smash me. Okay, that's too much. That might go. No, that won't go. I want you to F smash. So you see how that, oh, I got that okay. little boost right there? Right, let me, so I'll taunt so I can just DI right. Let me show you. I think I'm going to kill you. This is fine. I get what you're saying. Oh, okay. So, okay. You want to use the directional air dodge to recover a little bit. Yeah, don't really. Yeah, tell them about the upbeat. But yeah. The so primarily <laughs> when it comes to that directional air dodge, that's the first thing you want to do when you're recovering with Belmont, okay. especially when you're in this angle yeah. coming down to the stage. Okay. Uh, up B, 
I'm just gonna show you by just jumping off stage and just doing up me and trying to drift as far as I can. This is what it looks like. Very poor. Cool. So, especially when you're trying to recover from below, I can't make it there. Belmonts, they have a tether made out of their aerials. The best way to grab the ledge when you're in this position is actually doing the angled, angled up air, angled uh, forward air. Oh, that's the forward air angle. Yeah, because the up air doesn't really work as well when you're in this exact position. Okay, so the angled forward air. The up air when you're below the ledge is the better situation because it will clip the ledge but quicker. On that angle. But on that angle, you want to angle the up air, which is, is can be difficult because. I still, in neutral, when I'm like trying to space with this character, I still mess up like the actual angles in neutral. Like I do these down airs by accident. Yeah. So, so you have to be you very practice. deliberate. You have to practice this yeah. because essentially what can happen is, especially if you're trying to do more advanced with your recovery, like if you're recovering and you want to do a down angle forward air to grab the ledge when you're above it, because if you do it this way, you're not going to grab the ledge yeah. in every scenario. But if you down angle it, you'll always you'll always grab it when you're in this kind of like uh, directional arc. And if you don't practice it, you're gonna down air and kill yourself, which I have done plenty of times. Okay, so how do we wrap it up to the overall theme? So we're just gonna talk about uh, advantage and disadvantage. So Belmonts 100% are, from what I've seen and just playing, are some of the best ledge trappers in the game to just kind of go over some simple strategies that you can, you know, do at home. Uh, grab the ledge and just, like, do standard get-up. Yeah, just, oh, like... That's even... I jumped in that so bad. Just, like, hold up. That will, that will cover standard get-up. That just can't... That can't be beat with anything. It's just going to cover standard get-up. And get up. So if you're fox... And if you roll... Oh, I'll do that. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. If you roll. Uh, it can sometimes catch people's rolls. Yeah, it actually catches rolls and some characters. So, if you roll, I can still catch you. And if you get hit with that fire near the ledge, guess what's happening? I'm watching you whip. And he, I just tried to jump inside B, actually. Yeah. So he did the holy water. And another thing you don't know is, like, he can holy water and his shield. Not holy water and shield, like, oh, yeah. do the same thing. Holy water and shield. Somehow, if I even get past, like, if I just shield right now, Oh yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, don't, don't do anything. Fox, Fox and Falco can't side beat through the shield. So like, especially oh, against yeah. Fox, because now that he can't side beat through me as a mix-up, I can literally holy water. Yeah. If he if he's gonna side B, I can just react to it in shield. Yeah. yeah if he somehow missed the holy water. If, if the holy water somehow missed, I can just side B in shield. But, but you notice how that S smash is missing? This is where you do the up smash. So just right. do that. <laughs> so advantage state uh, at the ledge 100% because you your opponent has yeah, less movement options. Close, you have less movement options and Belmonts are very good at gimping. So for example, with this fox right here, if he's off stage and like he does not be like down there, I can hit I can hit him with like an angle forward air. This is something else. Yeah, yeah. And it's a little hard to do when it's like in a fixed scenario. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, do that again. I can stay on stage and still idea. Alright, my angle's Two crisp. Two crisp. Okay, yeah. Okay, that was annoying. And if that's like Captain Falcon, Peach, or Ganon, those other recoveries. That are, are really easy yeah, to get. Yeah, yeah. The was, Belmonts. Yeah, the gym, yeah, even yeah. Sheik now. She's like less of this little so like. Yeah, it's like, look how low that hits. That cover is like and way Link. more off the yeah, and Link. <laughs> uh, all those type of characters. So Belmonts are really good at going off stage and gimping characters. So like if I throw them off here and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go gimp them. And something he was doing earlier is like he backed through me and then like did an axe or whatever. Oh yeah, like what I'll do is like I'll grab you, I'll be like, okay, yeah, shallow I'll throw axe. This, and then like yeah, hold, yeah, basically I'm like getting hit by the axe, shot at the eye, and then he'll just pull it in and I'm just dead or something. Yeah, so like if I do arm. back throw. So that, and then he has me scared of the axe. And then I'm like, oh, I'll do this way. Go up. And it hit just, uh, that would hit. Yeah. Like in the matches, he's hitting me with it. Was so. Where I can change the trajectory of the axe and like reach or jump with it. Oh, this is... So, strengths. In the corner, 
ledge trapping and edge guarding, Belmonts are by far one of the best characters, if not the best at such actions. Range, you don't want to play up close with your characters, but don't feel afraid to do so because a lot of your moves, up the down tilt, uh, up the out of shield is really good. really good because it's invincible on frame five and six, and frame six is when the first move, uh, first part of the move comes out. Um, Primarily, when you're talking about combos, Belmonts really don't combo. Like, a lot of their combos seem to me to be uh, a lot of situational. Like, uh, you know, if I hit the axe, I can, you know, maybe do a follow-up off of it. If I, you know, hit my down air, I can get, like, an aerial out of it. Yeah. But that's not really what their strength is. Their strength is is that they kill stupid early, they have tremendous range to rack up damage, and, like, you can't get on the on them. Because if you have good projectile game where you're throwing the holy water, because yeah. here's the way, here's the thing about the uh, Belmonts, and this is a simple strategy in neutral that you can use, yeah. is that holy water, PB and J, what's your option against this? Jump over, right? Yeah. So if you do that, just just make it, just do the most Jimmy jump. So holy water, axe. Yeah. That's the, the other end. thing is the side beat. Do the side beat. This is what I do a lot. Side beat. I'll be feeling safe while I hit him, and I get hit on the way back. Yeah, yeah, on the way back. I feel like that feels. I feel more dumb when I get hit on the way back. I guess. So I could go something like this. Like I could be like, so if you go back yeah. there and I side B, I'm like, yeah. Oh, you oh, jump over yeah, jump and get and guess what I do in response to that. So if you jump over, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm running away. There it comes. <laughs> I think it just goes forever, man. Yeah, I actually counted it's it. It's like so, Thor's hammer. So, dude. So, <laughs> So on the soft throw, it goes five characters in front of him and yeah. ten, uh, ten characters behind him. Uh, and then for the hard throw, yeah. ten characters in front of him, ten characters behind him. Uh, so it pretty much covers the whole stage for a lot of stages. So now I'm even stop on the side, but I make sure they. So look, you could be like, okay, I'm gonna jump over it, and I could be like, okay, you're gonna jump over it, I'm gonna run away from you, and do F tilt, which you have to shield, and then you have to shield the uh, cross. So like, if you jump over it. Exactly. It's, it's <laughs> so, the main thing with Belmonts is that they kind of use their projectiles and rock, paper, scissors. Okay. If you holy water, people have to jump. You throw the axe in that case. If you throw the axe, they have to either shield or avoid it or try to beat it. Because you can actually hit it with certain moves. But, I was dead right there. But, here is the thing about the axe. Uh, this is what I said to him earlier, and this is just something I wanted to kind of mention to you. Yeah. Uh, the axe does 18 damage. Yeah. Uh -huh. The axe does 18 damage. I can follow up the axe pretty much at, at, at any percent that isn't, you know, ridiculously high. So at worst, you're getting 30 damage if you miss attacking the axe. So it's always safer to either avoid it or shield it. But... It does like half your shield if it hits yeah. it. And if your shield's any lower than I that, I call like, him Hammer Bro when he's Hold inside. your shield a tiny bit, and I'm gonna see if I can break it. Oh, oh. that is my Hammer Bro. Oh, I need you to. That's almost man. I don't know. Angle your shield up. I'm gonna see you on a lower yeah. shield. Oh, oh. I just shield. <laughs> I try to parry it actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that can almost break a shield, like very close. Um, so yeah, rock, paper, scissors. Holy water, your typical answer to beat it is gonna be jumping above it. Uh, another thing that's really good, like let's say he wants to jump where, right where I'm at, so you just jump over the holy water. Okay. I can up tilt. Yeah, one time he up aired me too. Was, uh, yeah, he like tried to double jump above it, and he went like, what's up, I'm fine. And I thought I was cool. Yeah, so like you get through the holy water, and he tries to jump above it. And I can just do the up tilt. Uh, throw the cross. If he shields it, I just dash back and throw it again. How much? Do the cross again on the Oh, that's not a skill. It does like 25% of your shield. Yeah, that's actually a lot of shield. Boy, hold on. Alright, that's yeah. way more shield than I thought. Oh, oh I actually got scared because it was coming back. <laughs> yeah, so I hate drama time. You'll, see, drama the You'll see the matches soon. So, projectiles, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Um, other than that, not much of a comboer. Edge guard, gimps, ledge trapping, and just raw kill power. Don't be afraid to kind of like just throw out kill moves. 
every once in a while in neutral. Like a lot of times I'll have people like try to play around the F tilt and they'll be like, okay, I know the range of the F tilt, but the F smash is like double the size of the F tilt. So like I could be running around like this where PBJ is just like standing still or he's dash dancing. He's like, okay, I'm outside of the range for the F tilt right here. But I could just be like, okay, schwack. Yeah. I could just be like, okay, boom, and that will kill. <laughs> So disadvantages? Disadvantages, definitely, you know, down tilt and up beat are great and all, but the Belmont's main core strength is range and projectile fighting. They get comboed really hard. Their edge guarding capabilities against them is very, very strong. They have one of the worst recoveries when it comes to up beat, just as far as horizontal distance. Um, and typically, you can hit the, the Belmonts before they reel in with their uh, tether right here. So, even with the tether, they are still very susceptible to getting edge guarded. Um, as far as other weaknesses, another thing that I've kind of noticed with them is that there's two kinds of characters that they have to change their playstyle for. I still believe that they're sh the Belmonts are strong against these characters, but one, characters that you can't really hit with the wit well, small characters. Pichu, Pichu, Kirby, uh, vil uh, the villager people, the villager people, the, vill the village people. He won't even give. Why He won't even give my Isabel a name. I'm just <laughs> the villager people. The villager people. Um, small characters are really hard to hit with the whip because their hurt box is just so small. The way you do that, and this may not work for some people, because I'm going to be honest with you, if you like, you know, being aggressive, this is not the character for you. You can definitely be aggressive with this character, but its core strength is going to be spamming, honestly. Yeah. If it's a small character, throw a lot more projectiles. Throw a lot more projectiles and mix it in with your arrow game. If it's a fast character, like Fox, for example, you can't really set up your projectiles like really well because he can jump over them and land really quickly and like do quick mix-ups. That's where you want to use your range a lot more and kind of space more. Once you kind of get a little bit of distance where you have reading room, like if I hit this Fox with like a forward air and he's away, I can be like, okay, now I can set up my spacing with the cross, bounce him away, he has the shield, I can get in. I'm trying to buffer him. He just, I got out of my up tilt out of one air right up there. Safe guy, man. I'm safe up tilt again. I would be me legit out of my own. See, that, I, that backward, like, downward angle thing, aerial, or whatever, that's safe, man. And the forward air one. That's how you're probably going to have to fight against the small characters, in my opinion. Yeah. You fight, you... Yeah. You fight against the small characters with the projectiles just because even though it hits on a lower arc, it's still like a kind of a small hitbox as far as like yeah, so I want to stay close to this, this guy, man. You want to stay close to combo. Get off of me. So small characters and fast characters, you have to change your playstyle very heavily. I think he can still deal with them well, but these kind of characters especially are going to give uh, the Belmonts trouble. I can just guarantee that. And then characters that have really good uh, gimping and edge guarding uh, capabilities. Yeah. But those big, some big characters and Snake is just a rough estimate, but we think that Belmont is uh, <coughs> destroy Snake. So. Yeah, so it's just a rough estimate. As far as the guide guys, that's kind of like the yeah. gist of it. What I'm honestly going to do because you know, you know, we're going to be playing a lot of Ultimate. Uh, once I kind of get a little more familiarized with all the characters and like how I feel against Belmont, yeah, I'm going to build like a very rough matchup guide yeah match where guy. i'm just gonna exactly say you know who does he have advantage of in my opinion based on what i think they can do and you know characters i've generally played and who do i think he beats okay but that's pretty much it guys if you have any questions for me Comment because i know this was kind of you know freestyle so there might have been a lot of things i missed or a lot of things i didn't really articulate yeah. properly if you have any questions, feel free to tweet at me at Stango uh, SSBM. Comment on this YouTube video as well, because I'll be looking at a lot of the comments. And if you have any questions that need to be asked in terms of, you know, how do you play Belmont or anything like that, uh, feel free to ask me. And uh, any information that is found out after the fact with this guy. Yeah. Just let us know. Like just we, let, just, just, update just let us know because a lot of the times, you know, in these kind of videos, we can kind of like throw annotations like after the video is already uploaded and, you know, either correct information or, you know, add. Yeah, especially uh, in the comments. Yeah, tips and tricks and things like that. But uh, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. 
feel free to uh, tune into the Smash Studio stream. We're going to be doing yeah, sure. a lot of ultimate lot of content. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. You're probably there's watching it right now, and there's a stream right now. There's probably right now. a stream happening right now. Right now. Wherever part of the country you're in, just watch it right now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see you later, guys. Peace.